All right, Mike, thanks so much. And as Mike mentioned, we'll be checking in with him and our colleagues in West Warwick throughout the night. Mike, thank you. And earlier today, Governor Dan McKee and Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos laid a wreath at the station memorial. They then visited the memorial shelter, which houses a timeline of the 24 hours leading up to the fire and its aftermath. As we've been talking about, 20 years have passed, so toddlers and babies who lost parents in the fire are now young adults. Elizabeth Howorth has some memories of her dad. She was just three years old at the time, now a college student. Liz has grown up learning more about her dad and the tragedy that claimed his life. I sat with Liz and her mother, Karen. They've spent the last 20 years doing what so many families who are affected by the fire have done dealing with the deeply personal impacts this has had on their private lives while constantly being reminded of the tragedy that shook the public. It launches the application as okay. that I've been in prompt should do the re-indexing. Photographs and video clips. Oh, this is me and me and him. Tell the story of a man called Buddy, Carlton Howorth III, a fun-loving, outgoing 39-year-old who loved music and his little girl. Elizabeth just stole his heart. I mean, I see, constantly see him through her. Now 23, Elizabeth Ann Howorth, who goes by Liz, has limited memories of her dad, but they all involve laughter. I think that's the same night of the, him, them taking the video of him singing. Oh Over the past two decades, she's learned they have the same taste in music and they talk alike, but she's also had to deal with his absence. Father-daughter dances with mom by her side instead. Dad not being there to offer guidance to his teenage girl. As I got older, I think I started to realize how much it was impacting me, but I was kind of blind to it majority of my life. I think it lay dormant until my teen years. As she dealt with her personal grief, she became increasingly aware of just how public the tragedy was that claimed her father's life. One time in particular that was really bad was we were learning about fire safety in school and they showed what not to do in a fire and they showed footage from the station fire on the video for everyone and everyone just kind of looked at me and it was like a weird moment of like oh do I not understand the gravity of like this situation. Liz doesn't remember much from the time of the fire relying on her mother to recount how she learned her dad was really gone. And when we went to his grave site it was honestly it was one of the worst moments of my entire life. We went there my dad took us and we just went to the grave and I said listen I said um Daddy is here. I said, you know, Daddy is here. And she just looked at me like, uh, just incredibly sad. Like, I get it. Like, I get it. He's not, you know what I mean? I'm like, he's not going to come home. This is very sad. And she was just so, the face was awful. Yeah. Yep. Together with the support of their family and counselors, Karen and Liz say they've learned to forge ahead. With this tragedy in their past, they urge others to be kind, to learn from their mistakes, and to know it can get better. I want to let other people know that who have ever been impacted by something like this, that it's gonna you're gonna get you're gonna be fine. Like you're gonna if everything's gonna be okay. That was one thing that Liz really wanted to drive home. If you're going through a tough time, rely on your support system. They will get you through this and it will get better. Yeah, and I mean, I, I feel like as we hear so many stories of victims and their families, yeah. um, just, just the way that they've chosen to go forward and make it their mission one way or another is just incredible. They're so resilient. And Buddy was also considered a hero for helping a woman to escape from that fire. Karen and Liz told me that's just the kind of person he was, always putting other people first. And even though it's been two decades since the tragedy, you can still help make a difference in the lives of those impacted. You can do it through the Station Nightclub Fire Children's Scholarship Fund. It's run through the Rhode Island Foundation, and you can find a link right now on our website, WPRI.com. Also right now on WPRI.com, more on our special report, Station Fire Remembrance 20 Years Later. There you can find a timeline of what happened and a photo gallery of those who lost their lives that night.
You know, think about this. There are a number of children who are now young adults who lost their parent, a father or a mother, uh, 20 years ago. And Elizabeth Harworth was only three years old at the time. And I know, Kim, you get to sit down with uh, Liz and her mom so they could tell their story. Emotional. Yeah, very emotional. Liz and Karen Howarth have spent the last 20 years, Mike, doing what so many families affected by the fire have done, dealing with the deeply personal impacts this has had on their private lives while constantly being reminded of the tragedy that shook the public. Carlton Howarth III, buddy to his friends and family. <laughs> A free-spirited 39-year-old who loved music and his little girl. But yeah, him just with friends. Also, he's like a good singer too, I feel like. Two decades after Liz Howarth lost her dad, she still gets reminders of him. The one video that made me laugh, it was like a cute video, is um, him at a bar and it's him singing Take It Easy by the Eagles and it's so cool. And now like... I'll go places and it'll just be like playing randomly. The 23 year old has learned they not only share the same taste in music, but they look alike and talk alike too. Liz is a college student now, but her mom Karen will never forget trying to tell her then three year old daughter that daddy wasn't coming home. That you can't say daddy's in heaven because she's going to think she can go there. We just went to the grave and I said, listen, I said, um, you, daddy is here. I said, you know, daddy is here. And she just looked at me and she was just so, the face was awful. Yeah. Yep. Liz says it wasn't always easy growing up. She was bullied by children who were ignorant to why her dad wasn't at father daughter dances. And she was constantly reminded of the fire, sometimes when she least expected it. I'll be scrolling through TikTok and it'll be like photos before disaster. And I, my brain doesn't go, oh, the fire is going to be in this. I remember like this happened to me a month ago. I was watching it and it was like the third or fourth photo. And it was, there it was, the photo of, of them performing on the stage. And I was like, that hurt. I like broke down crying. I was like, oh my God, like, why is this impacting me? Navigating their grief has been something Liz and Karen have done together with the help of family and counselors. I want to let other people know that who have ever been impacted by something like this that it's gonna you're gonna get you're gonna be fine like you're gonna if everything's gonna be okay and through Liz the man people affectionately called buddy lives on I think she looks like him I think what's incredible like she said before uh, she talks like him she's a writer she's creative and his um, spirit legacy continues on with her Liz is certainly a remarkable young woman, and she and her mom also had this message. Learn from your mistakes and just be kind. Mike.